Hey there. We all know that the world is a really complicated place. And one of the ways that people interact with the world is through our senses. So today we're going to talk about the senses in blind people. So let's get an introduction together to make sure we're all on the same page. So we have our five senses and we use those to perceive the world around us and help us make decisions about what to do. Now, as we grow, the brain forms neural pathways to process all of our different senses. If we lose a sense, no matter what it is, our brains can reorganize those neural pathways. And this is called neuroplasticity. So our researchers wanted to know how people responded to moving sounds. And specifically, they wanted to look at how blind people versus sighted people did this. So let's talk about some methods. What the researchers did was they challenged people to detect moving sound from background noise and then tell them what direction that sound was moving. So they used eight early blind participants. These are participants who lost their sight during childhood instead of adulthood versus eight sighted participants. And then the researchers used a mathematical model to see how the early blind participants and the sighted participants processed this detection of moving sound. So what did they find? Well, sighted and early blind people process these sounds in the same way, in the same manner. But early blind participants were much better at detecting which direction the sound was moving when there was background noise. The sighted participants could only detect moving sound and figure out which direction if it was three times louder than the background noise. And early blind participants could do this at half that volume. So if we look at a graph of this, here on the x-axis, we have our sighted participants and then our early blind participants. And on the y-axis, we have the volume above the noise that the moving sound was, um, and that's in decibels. So we've got five and 10. And most of the sighted participants were up around 10. Most of the early blind participants were around five decibels. So what does this all mean? Let's get a discussion going. Basically, what the researchers found out is that these early blind participants were really good at tuning out background noise. Now that could be for a variety of reasons. One is that they've had a lot of time to practice figuring out specific noises from the din of the background noise all around them. But it could also be this concept of neuroplasticity, where the neural pathways have reorganized themselves to allow the person to be better at processing sounds that are moving. So for blind people, that does not mean that their senses are better. They still hear just like a sighted person but they could be better at actually processing those sounds and figuring out what they mean in the landscape of the world around them. What does this mean for you? Let's talk about some conclusions. One thing that you can do is be an advocate for accessibility. So one suggestion is to use alt text when you're posting photos online. That way, if someone is using a screen reader, the screen reader can describe the photo to the person, even if the person can't see it. Also, if you're going to the movies with your friends, you could call the theater and ask if they have audio descriptions that are available. Hope you learned something today. Have a good one.